Hey everybody, it's Devin here, again with Ace Customs. I was just back to give y'all some helpful tips on something. It's summer, it's very hot all across the nation, and I want to give y'all a little clue on how to check your air conditioners for leaks. So first, we're gonna show the most common, and the most common is the actual service port where you put the Freon in. You know, you can go to the store, to the auto parts, buy your own Freon and put it in there, and then it just comes right on back out. Well, I'm gonna tell you that there's a spot where you put it in, a lot of times that is where your leak is. So on this vehicle right here, I'm gonna show you, it's a very common vehicle. This is a, a Chevrolet, one of the LS's. A lot of other uh, Chevrolets are gonna be very, very similar. Some of them have the compressors on the top. Some of them have them at the bottom on some vehicles. Um, but I'll kind of walk you through on kind of what to look for here. So if you'll come in here, I'll show you real quick. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna look for these plastic little caps right here. So you'll have two of them on this one here. And each vehicle is gonna have two of them. You got a high side and you have a low side. So the low side is where you're gonna end up putting in your Freon. So if you open it up and you look in there, there's gonna be a little valve stem in there it looks like just like the ones it looks like on your tires it's very similar very very similar and like i said all vehicles are going to have this here and so if your vehicle has air conditioner it has one of these somewhere um what you want to do is when you put the freon in there you want to get you some some sort of soapy water um uh, whether it's dawn whether it's Windex, something that makes bubbles, okay? Same way you check your gas lines, if you have natural gas or something like that, you wanna spray it on there, and if it starts bubbling, you know it's leaking. Now, I'm gonna tell you this right now, guys, if yours is leaking like this, and you're not comfortable with changing it yourself and you get a shop to do it, I will let you know this. They're gonna try to charge you a lot of money to change this, okay? The part for this particular vehicle at the auto parts is like, 12 bucks okay so if they try to get you and say oh yeah it's 250 300 that's, that's ridiculous okay ridiculous you can go to walmart you can change this yourself in the package comes with a little tool where you can unscrew this and screw it back in yourself if this is where you're leaking from and it comes with new little caps here so <clears throat> that's one way to check another thing you can do is when you fill it with freon if it's not leaking there and you're and you suspect you have a leak spray all of your connections so you see these connections here, there's O-rings there, there's O-rings there, there. Anywhere you see a connection, there's going to be an O-ring uh, all the way down to your compressor. Now, if you'll follow the lines, they're usually always going to be these aluminum lines. Sometimes they'll go in the rubber like this, but there's usually always going to be aluminum. You follow those aluminum lines, and it'll usually take you to, uh, if you don't know what a compressor looks like, they all, they all kind of look different but you'll just follow the lines down uh, to it and you'll follow them to what looks like a big pulley and that's going to be your AC compressor and you'll see the lines go into that. Same thing, you can spray the soapy water on there as well. The same goes for your high side here. Unscrew the little cap, spray you some spray in there. If you see it bubbling, same thing. So what I'm, what I'm essentially saying is, guys, is you can pretty much diagnose your own... Uh, Freon leak uh, at your house, essentially, with uh, very, very little money. And uh, you really don't have to know a whole lot to do it. It's very simple, it's very easy, and uh, I would definitely recommend doing it if your vehicle is low on Freon. Now, if you are, if you're, if you're, if your air is constantly going from cool to hot and you can hear your compressor coming on and off on and off on and off you hear a little clicking noise you know when you're sitting there idling uh that's your compressor if it's coming on and off like that constantly that usually is an indicator that you are low on freon there could be other issues too but the most common is that you're low on freon and another thing too guys is like i said it's summer taught make sure you keep up with all of your uh your fluids okay so you want to check your engine oil you know you want to check that when it's cold when the vehicle hasn't been ran in a little while and you want to make sure you're in these little these little crosshair looking lines you know you want to make sure you're in between that so and on your transmissions 
you want to make sure you check the transmissions when the vehicle you see how high that looks that's not actually the level in the transmission um, you want to check these and if you read on your stick it'll even tell you I don't know if you can look it in there and if you can catch it or not maybe you can maybe you can't but anyways you want to check it when it's hot and up to operating temperature and in park and then you'll see little lines down here where it says cold and hot obviously once it's running you want it in this hot zone right here if it's in the hot zone you're good if it's too low uh, look up what's recommended for your vehicle and then uh, add you some until you get into those positive lines right there also do not forget this is even more important than the freon is keep up with your coolant in your vehicle you'll see lines on your little tanks there that'll tell you this is where it should be make sure the coolant is full it's very very hot these vehicles are working extra hard and just make sure you're keeping up with everything keeping that maintenance up and another thing too that's very important with a lot of the synthetic oils and stuff you use today they don't get up to temperature so they will cause a kind of a gumming into your engine if they don't get up to temperature fast enough so what I'm saying is and I know in some cities you can't do this obviously because of you know well you know uh, but if you can uh, try to leave your car running for as long as possible so that that oil can get up to temperature and be able to drain back down where it's supposed to be uh, another good hint uh, another good piece of advice is take and in the mornings when you start up your vehicle try to start it up about 10 minutes before you leave you know uh, the saying I like to tell people all the time is imagine if you've been sleeping all night and I come in there at four o'clock in the morning, wake you up and say, okay, let's run a mile. You don't get to take a drink. You don't get to stretch. You don't get to do anything. I just said, get up and run full blast an entire mile. That wouldn't feel very good. Well, neither does your vehicle, okay? Let it warm up. It's not gonna hurt anything and it's gonna make it last a lot longer. Anyways, guys, I hope for these some help, helpful tips on helping your vehicle last a little bit longer and maybe saving you some money on some air conditioning stuff. Of course, if you have any questions or any comments, please uh, DM me, send me messages, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, obviously TikTok, YouTube. You know, I take messages everywhere. Um, also, one other thing too, guys, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a huge, huge following right now, but if any of you are interested in merchandise, that is coming very, very soon. I'll have shirts, I'll have hoodies, uh, beanies, hats, uh, refrigerator magnets, little flags, um, uh, bracelets, keychains. I'll have a bunch of that stuff, and it's it's. I'm working on that as we speak. If y'all are interested, if you're not, that's fine too. You don't have to. It's just if you are. Um, but anyways, guys, like I said, I hope this helps y'all out in some form or fashion. And just make sure you're taking care of those vehicles. I guarantee it'll save you hundreds and in some cases thousands of dollars. So guys, y'all stay cool. Thank you.